wait for the slides to queue up. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hello from NASA headquarters and welcome to today's event, Opportunities for Northeastern Pennsylvania Small Businesses to Support NASA Programs, hosted by Congressman Matt Cartwright and NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. We have an exciting agenda for you today. And now I would like to quickly go over some housekeeping remarks. This event is being recorded. Please turn off your video feeds. All attendee participants will be on mute for the duration of the event. To enhance your virtual experience, we recommend that you pin the speakers in place. Click the ellipsis that appears beside the speaker's name in the video feed. Once you have selected the ellipsis, choose pin from the drop down menu. Now that person's feeds will remain stationary. There will be a Q&A session after today's presentations. To submit, please enter your questions into the chat box at any time during this event. The questions will be answered during the Q&A session. With your questions, please include your name, company, and panelists you wish to address. And now I would like to introduce our host. Today, we are honored to be joined by Congressman Matt Cartwright, who represents Pennsylvania's 8th Congressional District. He is a member of the U.S. House's Committee on Appropriations, where he sits on the Commerce, Justice, Science Subcommittee, which funds NASA. And now, please welcome Congressman Matt Cartwright. Congressman, it's, it is your turn. <laughs> I'm going to send him a text. <laughs> OK, sir. I think he muted himself. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Congressman Cartwright, can you hear us, sir? All right. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Daphne, uh, nod your head if you can hear me. Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. I'm coming to you from Capitol Hill. We're in the middle of uh, appropriation season and uh, lots of votes going on and lots of debate. And I just came off the floor myself. Uh, but today it's an honor to have a, an old friend of mine, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, and also Glenn Delgado and Jen Gustetic from NASA's Small Business Programs with us today. Uh, thank you, Daphne Huber and the entire team at, at NASA for making the event possible. Uh, I call Jim Bridenstine an old friend because uh, we've known each other for about eight years now. Uh, we both got elected to Congress in the same year in 2012 and we went through freshman orientation together and uh in the in december of 2012 and uh, got sworn into office in january of 2013. Uh, but one day on the floor jim came up to me and he said matt i'm i'm leaving congress i want to be the nasa administrator will you support me um and i was happy to uh, jim's good guy and i like working with him and uh, i'm excited about uh, taking over as chair of the the subcommittee of appropriations that funds NASA uh, and the whole space program. Um, today we're here to discuss how business owners can take advantage of opportunities to participate uh, in the bidding process for projects that will accelerate our future in space uh, and also aer aeronautics research. Now as a small business, you, you might think uh, Getting contracts with the federal government is, is complicated and uh, above your pay scale, beyond your reach. But I'm here today to tell you uh, that may not be the case. It may be easier than you think. Small businesses are a vital part uh, of the economic heartbeat of Northeastern Pennsylvania and, and certainly of so many 
communities across the United States. They provide good jobs and they invest in our communities. Um, and knowing this, I've made it one of my priorities to help businesses um, and their owners reach their full potential. And that includes helping them figure out the contracting pro process with the federal government and including NASA. Uh, I'm dedicated to promoting economic development because that's, that's what leads to uh, our number one priority in my office, which is good jobs, better jobs, higher paying jobs for Northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, events like this one really allow us to connect uh, business owners with opportunities to grow uh, the business and provide um, a wider exposure for their, their products and services. All of us want to see small businesses in northeastern Pennsylvania thrive. Um, I think you're going to be excited and surprised by today's presentation and the opportunities that exist for businesses like yours to partner with the Space Administration. As you know, um, uh, I am a member of the Appropriations Committees and uh, NASA is one of, the, uh, one of the agencies under my purview. I'm a strong supporter of their mission and their program. Uh, they do an awful lot of, uh, a lot of more things than you think. It's not just uh, blasting off rock rocket ships. Uh, it's uh, an awful lot of uh, uh, research uh, and uh, applied science and pure science and uh, things that all Americans benefit from whether they're interested in astronomy or not. Um, as a member of the Commerce, Justice and Science Subcommittee, um, it's been my privilege to work with uh, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. As I say, we came in together. Um, he was nominated by President Trump to become the 13th Administrator of NASA, uh, the, our nation's space exploration agency. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask Administrator Bridenstine to discuss the Artemis launch program uh, and the opportunities that it presents for all of us on this on this conference. I want you to know I, I do strongly support NASA funding for the Artemis program because I think it ensures continuation of American leadership uh, in space exploration. Uh, and it opens up all kinds of opportunities for further scientific research. So uh, with that, uh, Jim, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Absolutely, uh, Representative Cartwright. What an honor to be here with you and with your constituents. And yes, um, you know, I, I consider you a great friend, uh, somebody who uh, came into Congress with me at the mm. same time. And of course, um, you know, it, you know, there was there was a moment in time when I asked you if you would support me for NASA administrator, and uh, and you did. Um, we've always worked well together, even across the aisle, um, and I've already always appreciated your leadership um, for things like veterans and national security and space exploration. Uh, you've really been a great leader on those issues, and and we're very grateful for that. And I'm especially grateful for it now as as the head of NASA. We. We need your leadership now more than ever, and of course, this town hall is a perfect example of, of, of what you do. Um, yeah, so so we are we have an objective now under the Artemis program to go to the moon and then on to Mars. Uh, the moon, and, and that's with humans. Uh, some of you may have seen that just today we launched the Perseverance rover to Mars, and we did that with with a purpose. We're looking for signs of life on another world, in this case, Mars. We know that Mars was at one time covered in water. In fact, the northern hemisphere of Mars was two thirds covered in ocean. We know that Mars at one time had a thick atmosphere and a magnetosphere that protected it from the radiation of deep space. In other words, Mars was at one time habitable. It could have had life. And so with our previous rovers, we've made these discoveries. We've also discovered that Mars is covered in complex organic compounds, the building blocks of life, which don't exist on the moon at all, but they're all over Mars. Um, and we know that the methane cycles of Mars match the seasons of Mars, which is another indicator that there very well could be life on Mars. So, so we launched a robot today called Perseverance to Mars. It is an astrobiology robot. It will be looking for signs of ancient life on this red planet that, that of course, fascinates so many people. Um, 
and, and, and it was a very successful launch. I want to congratulate the NASA team on doing just a, a magnificent mm -hmm. job. But it's also true that we want to go to Mars with humans. That's what we want to do. And this is a project that requires, you know, apolitical or bipartisan support for not just numerous administrations, but in fact, decades and in fact, generations. That's what NASA does. Um, and, and in order to get there with humans, we need to first prove that we can learn how to live and work on another world. We do that first at the moon using the resources of the moon for life support. There's hundreds of millions of tons of water ice on the south pole of the moon. For example, water ice represents oxygen, so it's air to breathe, but it's also water for, for, for drinking. And hydrogen, which is the H and H2O, is rocket fuel available in hundreds of millions of tons on the south pole of the moon. So we go to the moon as the proving ground. It's a three day journey home. So things can go wrong and we can still be safe and make it home from the moon. But when we go to Mars, Mars and Earth are lined up. Literally, we have to have the planets align. And in this case, Mars and Earth are aligned once out of every 26 months. So when we go to Mars as humanity, We've got to be willing to stay for long periods of time. Um, and so and so going to the moon is the proving ground. Mars is the destination. The Artemis program, Matt, that's what you wanted me to talk about. That's our that's our journey to the moon using as much of uh, much as possible the the architecture that we can replicate at Mars. And what's unique about Artemis, as much as we all love the Apollo program, which of course landed Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon. And of course we went back to the moon five more times, a total of 12 people walked on the surface of the moon. The problem with Apollo is that it ended. We need to create a sustainable program, one that can last into the future. The other challenge with Apollo is that the only people that went to the moon were selected from fighter pilot backgrounds and test pilot backgrounds. And in those days, there were no opportunities for women. And all of America was, in fact, not represented. Well, now we go to the moon under Artemis. And in Greek mythology, Artemis is the twin sister of Apollo. She is the goddess of the moon. And now when we go with this very diverse, very qualified astronaut corps that includes the best of, of all of America, including women, we call it Artemis, named after the twin sister of Apollo, who was the goddess of the moon. So this is a very exciting time. Um, and as Representative Cartwright said, you know, if we're going to be successful here, we've got to do things that can last decades and generations um, in, in duration. Um, so that's really what Artemis is in a nutshell. But look, we've got we've got big contractors that people here are aware of. Companies like Boeing and Lockheed Martin, Blue Origin, SpaceX, Northrop Grumman. We've got these really big companies, but here's the other thing. We also need companies that provide, you know, things that maybe aren't always thought of when you think about these big programs. We need contractors and subcontractors and subcontractors to those to those subcontractors. Small businesses is what we need. Um, and so uh, a lot of times small businesses have a lot of capability that are that, that that are those capabilities are critically important to NASA, um, and and sometimes we don't get to take advantage of them because those small businesses don't think that they can compete. Well, I'm I'm here to tell you that you can compete. We're looking for people to compete to participate in this program, um, and and of course I think uh, I think if if we're going to be successful, we need to do it uh, with all of America. So there's two people that I want to. Um, I, I want to introduce you today that are going to be talking about how small businesses in Pennsylvania, uh, Representative Cartwright's constituents, how they can get involved in this program. And of course, uh, the first person is Jen Gustetic. Uh, she is a program executive for the Small Business Innovation and Research Program at NASA. And then second, we're going to talk to Glenn Delgado, who is an associate administrator at NASA. Uh, responsible for small business programs. Um, and I want to tell you, uh, with, with Glenn's leadership and with Jen Gustetic, um, we, are, we are having great success in small businesses. And, um, and Representative Cartwright, I'm, I, I know you're aware that the Small Business Administration every year uh, basically gives us a grade. Uh, it's, it's A, B, C, 
or F? How are we doing as an agency as it relates to giving awards to small business? Um, and with Glenn Delgado's leadership, we, we have been at an A. And just so you know, when he got here about seven years ago, we were at a C. <laughs> and he's, he's taken the program, he's moved it forward in a significant way to the point where you know, it makes me look good. So I wanna say thanks to Glenn Delgado. I wanna say thanks to Jen Gustetic. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Jen to, to give a presentation about small business innovation research. Thank you very much, Administrator Bridenstein. Um, and as I'm waiting for the slides uh, to get pulled up, that was quick. Great work. I um, want to say good afternoon to everybody. Um, I'm Jen Gestetic. I'm the uh, SBIR and STTR program executive for NASA, and I'll explain a bit more throughout this talk what that acronym means. Uh, and I'm joined today also in chat by Janelle Steele, who is the deputy program executive. So as a reminder, please make sure to ask your questions in the chat. We're all here for you today and want to make sure to get to as many questions uh, as we can uh, throughout the course of the discussion. I specifically want to thank Congressman Cartwright for bringing us all together today to talk about how we can encourage Pennsylvania's small businesses to get more involved with NASA. We at the NASA SBIR program know just how vitally important small businesses are to NASA's missions and want to extend our sincerest thank you to Congressman Cartwright for being a champion of our program through his work on the Appropriations Subcommittee that oversees NASA. You're very welcome, Jen. Thank you, Congressman. Next slide. So today we're going to go over three big areas. The first is doing a high level run through about what SBIR is and what we do and how we work within NASA and for our small business partners. The second, uh, we'll talk about how we're working with Congress to help our program grow its impact on small businesses in Pennsylvania and around the country. And finally, we'll cover changes that our program has made due to the uncertainty caused by the COVID-19 pandemic to help our small businesses, our small business partners weather the storm. Next slide. I thought we'd start with going over what our program is designed to accomplish. The NASA SBIR and STTR programs are tasked with furthering relevant research and building capabilities for NASA, the commercial aerospace industry, and the nation as a whole. We partner with small businesses. These are companies with less than 500 employees through the Small Business Innovation Research portion of the program, SBIR, but we also partner with research institutions through the Small Business Technology Transfer of the program, or the STTR side. Even though our program technically falls under one of the agency's four mission directorates, NASA's Space Technology Mission Directorate, we are tied to everything NASA does in areas like human exploration, space technology, science, and aeronautics. This includes the Artemis mission, by helping small businesses to get involved in this endeavor. Lunar topics have been and will continue to be a big focus of our annual solicitations, and we're excited to be able to fund more and more small businesses to participate in Artemis as the agency's budget grows. In order to support NASA, we in the SBIR program function kind of with a dual mandate. We are both a research and development program as well as a seed fund. Let me explain a little bit more what I mean about that. As a research and development program, we fund the maturation of technology for which NASA is the primary customer, and we help maintain the aerospace industrial base through those investments. However, we also operate as a seed fund. And as a seed fund, we are investing in disruptive capabilities in emerging markets, increasing the, company, uh, the country's competitive advantage, and generating opportunities for job creation across the country. Next slide. Our goal is to introduce new technologies and ideas when and where they're needed most. To find these technologies, we've invested in small businesses and research institutions in all 50 states and Puerto Rico, and we do so throughout the year. For example, we announced our phase one awards on June 30th of this year, which are awarded to small businesses to establish the merit and feasibility of their proposed innovation. Our program awarded over $50 million, $50 million to over 300 small businesses from 44 states across the country, including 14 awards to states or to businesses in Pennsylvania. Now, before I dive further into the specifics of our program's awards, I want to note a very important thing. We are not the only SBIR or STTR program in the federal government. In fact, we're just one of 10 SBIR programs and we all invest in different technologies and activities depending on what's relevant to our mission. NASA's annual investments make up just over 5% of the almost 4 billion, that's a B, 
almost $4 billion per year of SBIR funding that is available across all of the federal government's programs. So it's important to make sure to check out more than just NASA solicitations if you're interested in SBIR and SDTR. Next slide. On this map, you'll see a breakdown of the total number of SBIR and STTR awards listed by state since the program began in 1982, 38 years ago, making its first awards uh, the following year in 1983. Over the years, the program has made a total of 524 awards in the state of Pennsylvania, 475 SBIR awards and 49 STTR awards that require university partnerships. We're proud of our outreach and other efforts to increase the geographic diversity of participation in our program. And we're also a, a proud that the amount we're awarding annually is going, going up. In fact, in the past two years, the program awarded on average $157 million in phase one and phase two contracts to about 500 proposals from small businesses each and every year. Next slide. I've been talking about the various phases of the program, but just want to make sure that everybody has a high level understanding of what we mean by those phases. Phase one is what we like to call the idea phase, whereas phase two is focused on the actual development, demonstration and delivery of the innovation. And you'll see the dollar values um, uh, are uh, tied to that different level of ambition for those projects. It's our goal to help all of our small businesses graduate to phase three when their innovative technologies, products, and services make their way not only into NASA missions, but also into the broader commercial marketplace. But to put it plainly, getting to a successful phase three is very hard. Phase one and phase two awards alone are not typically enough to support a company's journey to commercialization. So our program has created additional opportunities to help firms get there. And with more than just funding, through initiatives like the i program and our various post-phase two vehicles that you'll see called out on this slide. i specifically trains small businesses that sometimes are more research-minded to understand how to approach discovering customer needs. This iterative approach to interviewing potential customers helps provide business assistance and training to our firms that in turn help them develop better products and grow and find real customers to help buy their services and technologies and innovative products. The post phase two vehicles I mentioned also, two of which are called out on the slide, are an important mechanism for our program to be able to support small businesses as they transition their technologies, readying them either for the commercial marketplace or into infusion and NASA mission. But these are not the only two post phase two opportunities that we offer. Uh, for example, earlier this month, you may have seen that NASA announced follow on funding through our, our sequential awards to four of our program's small businesses in order to accelerate the development of lunar technologies relevant to Artemis. These four awards totaled approximately $17 million. Those are big awards for the SBIR program. And that actually included one of Pennsylvania's own, Pittsburgh based Proto Innovations. Now that we've gone through the basics of our program, let's talk a little bit more about what real world success has looked like for another one of Pennsylvania small businesses. Next slide. Astrobotic, who is also based in Pittsburgh, is a fantastic example of a company that began with the NASA SBIR program and has since found incredible success, both through the larger agency and commercial partners. In fact, Astrobotic over the years has received 20 awards from the NASA SBIR program since its first award in 2009, 11 years ago, including some of the post phase two awards I mentioned earlier. So they make full use of all of those different funding vehicles I mentioned on the previous slide. And the company has also collaborated with six of the 10 NASA centers nationwide, a testament to the deep long term commitment it takes from both the small business and NASA to reach this sort of success. The company has to date received more than $270 million in contracts from NASA, uh, including SBIR funds, to support various aspects of the agency's return to the moon. Astrobotics Compact Lunar Rover and Precision, landing, pre precision Lunar Lander technology will deliver payloads to the lunar surface, and many of those technologies were actually developed with funds from the NASA SBIR program and continue to have a high impact on NASA missions. But it's not just NASA that has found use for Astrobotics technologies. Astrobotic commercialized its technology and offers lunar delivery services to customers around the world. For example, Astrobotic will be transporting a total of 26 payloads for customers in six countries during the same mission it will be conducting for NASA in 2021. And there's a bunch more success stories you can find on our website. Next slide. 
I just quickly want to touch on the fact that um, whether it's helping our small, our successful companies find partnerships with other NASA officer, uh, offices or the larger economy, we know we're not alone in the business of supporting space-related companies. We rely on Congress to help our program and therefore our small businesses grow through a variety of legislative authorities offered to us. Uh, for most, most of you that aren't familiar, our program is actually authorized by the Small Business Committee and is set to expire in 2022. And we're very grateful for the flexibility that's been offered to us in past authorizations that provide us some flexibility in funding, for example, through the administrative funding pilot program that allows us to do things like conduct outreach to underrepresented parts of the country, fund the i program that I mentioned previously, and also put on things like an annual industry day that help you get even more detail into what you need to be successful in our program. I'd encourage each of you guys to mark your calendar for October 20th through 22nd. That is going to be our Innovation and Opportunity Conference this year. It'll all be virtual and free to participate in. So we encourage all companies seeking to get more familiar with SBIR to mark your calendar and participate with us on that um, October 20th through 22nd. I just want to note um, there's still more flexibility that would be useful, especially as we seek to include more small businesses in the Artemis mission. Uh, we submitted a couple legislative proposals to the Hill last year, and these flexibilities would offer the ability for us to get larger dollar value awards to small businesses more quickly, specifically to enable them to meaningfully contribute to Artemis in the near future. We'd be happy to work with anybody um, on uh, the congressional side interested to learn more about those, uh, those, those uh, legislative proposals. Next slide. And finally, I just want to highlight a couple things that we've done, uh, recognizing the hardship that firms are under right now um, due to COVID-19. Um, we extended the phase one due date, this last proposal cycle from March 20th to April 20th, in order to give firms more time to prepare their proposals. And we know that that had a large impact because it resulted in a 14% increase in overall proposals to the program this year. Um, along those lines, uh, Keep an eye out for our announcement of the next phase one solicitation, uh, which is scheduled to come out on November 9th. We usually release our phase one solicitations in January, but the 2021 solicitation has actually been accelerated. We accelerated it by two months in order to make another funding opportunity available sooner, given all that's happened this year. The next slide is my last slide. I want to say if you have questions, please make sure to put them into the chat, but also our website is a great place to start, sbir.nasa.gov. If there's something you can't find, you're also welcome to send me an email and I'll get you connected to someone who can answer your question. My email is on this slide. Um, also, I've made sure to list some local resources that are there to help um, you not only be successful in applying for the SBIR program, but also to get you familiar with small business opportunities generally with the federal government. So to share more with you about those broader small business opportunities beyond research and development and technology innovation, I'll turn it over to NASA's Associate Administrator for the Office of Small Business Programs, Glenn Delgado. Glenn, over to you. Thank you very much, Jen. I appreciate it. Um, and opening, I would still like to also repeat what Jen said and to give my regards and thank yous to the Administrator, uh, Jim Bridenstine, and to Congressman Cartwright. Uh, without you guys' leadership, none of this would ever happen, and we all appreciate what you guys do for us. Now, I'm going to talk to you guys about how normal small businesses, everyday small businesses, can do business with NASA. Um, Jen talked about all the high tech and the development stuff from the SBIR point of view. I'm going to give you the general everyday sense of what goes on and what we do at NASA as far as helping small businesses. You can go to the next slide. Um, as Administrator Bridenstine remarked and talked about, we do basically everything at NASA from nuts and bolts to uh, you know doing the lawn, mowing the lawn, to doing facilities, regular engineering contracts, you name it, just like any other company, we still have to do that. And we do depend a lot on our small businesses and local small businesses that work at our 10 centers to help us do that. Uh, if you can look at our line, this just gives you an idea of the kind of money that we spend over the last five fiscal years. Um, we've gone up about 23%. And we, this is when it says prime dollars up there, this is exactly dollars that NASA awards directly to small businesses. So if you look at last year, you see we've awarded over $3 billion directly to small businesses for everyday common things. And I'll go over those with you in a second. <clears throat> Excuse me, next slide. Um, and this one here just gives you an idea. Um, as the administrator said, we do a lot of work with our large partners, such as Boeing and SpaceX, Lockheed Martin, and going down the line. 
However, in every one of those contracts, we have what's called subcontracting goals to where they have to do a portion of that work with small businesses. And the criticality of the small businesses to them is they would not be able to meet the NASA, the NASA missions without the technology that the small businesses provide to them as subcontractors and the work and personnel. A lot of people don't understand or know that small businesses hold almost twice as many patents to high technology as compared to large primes or large businesses. So what you guys work on, you guys are the innovators and you're the heart of the economy in the United States. And we also make sure that our large primes make sure they understand what you have to offer and how they can help that company um, be successful in the NASA missions. So if you look at FY19 again, you'll see it was 2.977 and 18 it was three, over 3 billion. So if you look at our numbers just last year alone, small businesses got over $6 billion from NASA between our prime contracts and our subcontracts. And you go next slide. Um, as you can see, I just did a quick breakout in Pennsylvania of what we did for the vendors located in Pennsylvania and the work being done in Pennsylvania. And as you can see, the percentage of the dollars that we went to small business um, this year was 87% of the dollars we did in small business, um, you know, went to small businesses in Pennsylvania. And then for the work done in Pennsylvania, it was 96.3% of the dollars that we awarded went to small businesses in Pennsylvania. So we are definitely focused and, you know, a lot of people talk to talk, but we actually walk to walk. We make sure that we award the contracts to the small businesses that we need to do business with. Next, next slide. Okay, as you heard me say to the relevance of subcontracting, our large primes really understand and get us that the small businesses have the technology that they need in order to, for them to complete our missions. And we really work very closely with them at outreach events and many other things to make sure that the small businesses get in front of them. We do what we call a lot of joint counseling to where when small businesses come to see us, we actually call the large primes in and they get the same pitch that we get so they can understand the technology that the small businesses are uh, able to provide to them and to NASA to make sure our missions are successful. Um, these are a couple of our big ones that are out there. The Orion program, as you can see, there's over 2,000 individual small businesses that are subcontracting to Lockheed Martin on that program alone. And they've done over $1.7 billion in subcontracts. And basically the same thing for the Space Launch System, which is going to be the biggest rocket that gets us back up to Mars. Um, you can see we did another $1.8 billion there. And there are also another uh, about 2,000 uh, small businesses doing work on that contract. And as I said, to me, $3 billion available in subcontracts is not anything to sneeze at. There's a lot of good money, a lot of good technology. And then plus with that, you guys mature, you grow your technology, the large primes see that you can do well with them. And then it opens up the door for many, many more opportunities for you. And believe it or not, they do share among each other. So if Lockheed finds a real good small business, they tell Boeing and SpaceX, hey, if you need this done, this is the guy to go to and then you get more work on the backside of that also. So it's a good thing um, to be a subcontractor. It helps you grow and it helps you be ready to be a prime when um, we're ready for you to be a prime small business where you can take over and do that technology yourself. Next. Um, this just gives you an idea of who are large prime contractors that we work with. Um, you can see the top one is uh, California Institute of Technology, which is alias JPL as we call them. A lot of people think JPL is actually a NASA center. Technically, it's a quasi NASA center. It's what's called an FFRDC, which is a federally funded research and development. So on my eyes, I see them as a uh, large prime vendor for us, just like Boeing and Lockheed and Northrop. Um, so at the beginning of the year, we give them $3 billion and then they do a lot of subcontracting out of that. They also have a subcontracting plan, just like the rest of the large primes do. And then you can just get an idea of who we work with. So um, you can start developing relationships with them. You go to the next slide. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you guys know what NAICS codes are. But basically, these are the standard classifications of the, the types of work that we do. Um, as you know, our name is NASA. Um, we do research and development, as the congressman said. And you can see a large portion of our budget, over $8 billion a year, heads that neighborhood. And then if you look at the rest of the stuff, you'll see engineering services, facility support, you know, building construction, 
you know, everything else that we need to do to be running just like a regular company. You'll see security guards and patrol services, you know, so most of the stuff we buy is normal stuff. However, we do look for a lot of high end and high tech companies um, to help us get through the various really technical missions that we do. So if you go to the next slide. OK, one other thing that's really out there that's been bothering uh, on the mind and will save a lot of small businesses is the um, category management aspect of uh, how the federal government's starting to buy things. Um, under, the F under the National Defense Reauthorization Act of 2021, which hasn't published yet, this is one of the proposed um, clauses that are being looked at to be put in there. So right now, for those who don't have an idea what category management is, is basically the large, uh, the government's looking to do fewer contracts and make those contracts bigger, which might not be as friendly to small businesses in the future. So what this clause says is basically they're asking OMB um, to not do that basically and to find a way that we can protect the small businesses. So that is out there right now. It is not in the final Defense Reauthorization Act, but I just want you to know that we are looking at it. We did comment on it and we're hoping that that makes it in so that we can protect the small businesses in the future. Uh, next slide. Now, in that light, as I just said, NASA has to also do the same thing because we're being you know, directed by the federal government that we have to shrink our footprint. And what I mean by that is, so for instance, I'll say security contracts. You know, we have the 10 NASA centers at the, you know, all over the country. Each one of them has to have a security contract so we can protect our assets and our people. Um, so right now we have 10 separate individual contracts that covers each one of the centers. So in the future, we're going to be looking at the aspect that we need to maybe do one or two contracts that have separate delivery orders that cover each of the 10 centers. So instead of us having to man 10 contracts, do 10 source boards, 10 solicitations, 10 proposal reviews, we do maybe two or three of them, and that can cover all 10 of the centers. So we're looking to do that on a lot of things so that we can shrink our footprint financially, save money, save resources, and be able to put more money into the missions that we need to accomplish. So what this slide's giving you an idea of is where we're gonna actually start doing these things. And now this is not gonna happen overnight and we're not gonna cancel any contracts or anything like that. But what we're gonna do is when contracts phase out, uh, when it's time to exercise the options or the current contract expires, we're looking to move things into certain categories per se and have them done either regionally or centralized or and in many cases, you'll see a lot of the blue circles remain there at the center itself. So for instance, like all the environmental stuff, those are so unique to each of the center. So all environmental contracts will stay at the centers. They will not be regionalized because it'll be just too difficult to do. Uh, next slide. Okay, and this will give you an idea of where we're gonna put stuff. This is just a couple of the categories like for A&E services construction and facilities uh, on operation and maintenance contracts. So like for the operation and uh, maintenance facilities, you look at KSC, they're gonna be in charge of buying a course for themselves as well as Stena Space Center and uh, Goddard Space Flight Center. And then JSC, of course, will buy for themselves, but they'll also buy for Marshall Space Flight Center and going down the line like that. So, and again, this is not gonna happen overnight. It'll be over like a five, six year period of time by the time all of this happens, but we just want to give industry a heads up that this is going to be coming down the pike as it's going, as, you know, it's inevitable. So um, next slide. Okay, now one thing that NASA does that we do a lot better than I say every other one of our federal counterparts, um, we put together what we call our active contract listings. So if you know much about the federal government and their buying cycles, approximately 80% of any agency's procurement budget um, is being spent on things that we purchased before. And, and about 30% of it is for new stuff that's coming out. So for all of that, 70% of that money, these contracts come and they run a course and then we go out and do a new solicitation. We normally start our solicitation and our re-procurement process about 18 to 24 months in advance before that contract expires so that everything's in place by the time we get proposals to the evaluations um, and award the contract. So what we do at NASA is we put together a listing of almost every one of our single contracts. 
We tell you what center it's at, what Nate's code it's at, the contract name, who the incumbent contractor is, um, how we competed it before, whether it was a small business set aside, service disabled set aside, a full and open competition, a woman owned, whatever it might have been. And we also tell you the potential value of it. And the key thing is we tell you the ultimate contract date. So we're doing a lot of your business development research for you. So if you know what makes code you, you're strong in, you can look through all of our active contract listings, see when a contract's gonna expire, and make sure you start your procurement process or your proposal process about 18 to 24 months in advance, putting your teams together, making sure you understand the statement of work. So when it comes out as a solicitation, you are ready to go. Because if you don't start until the solicitation hits the street, you're way behind the eight ball and you will not be too successful in government contracting. Uh, next slide. Okay, and the place that you can get this is on the NASA mobile app. Um, we, have a NASA, we have an app that's in both the Google store and the Apple store. Um, and it gives you a ton of information, not only the ACL sheets, but it tells you how to reach each and one of the small business specialists at all of our, our centers. Um, it tells you um, who the PCRs are, which are SBA procurement center representatives, um, the ombudsmen's, and it's just a wealth of information. It tells you all of our outreach events, our webinar series. Um, we do quite a bit of stuff and you can get to this all on the app store and it works on both your phones and your iPads and your laptops. And I advise everyone to download that now if you have any interest in doing business with NASA. Next slide. Okay, as I said before, we do quite a bit of uh, learning series. We do quite a few webinars and uh, things of that nature, like the last one we just did for the webinar series was the in and outs of uh, big protests. Uh, we had a sold out crowd with, um, and it was very, very productive and really good. Um, so you can see the upcoming webinars. We have one coming up in August 19th, basically in doing business with NASA from the vendor's perspective. We're gonna have a couple of our current vendors give you ideas of um, how they do business with us, what works, what doesn't work and things of that nature. Um, go to the next slide. Um, these are our next upcoming outreach events. Uh, we've done actually three this week already. Um, let's say we're doing today on July 30th. Uh, we have another one on September 9th where we're actually doing the whole spotlight um, from the Women's Chamber of Commerce. We have an all-day event with them. Every one of our small business specialists will be speaking as well as myself. And then we're holding our own um, outreach event, our big virtual outreach event in October on the 7th. Um, so that one will be worth a, a, web of inf a wealth of information. Um, you just go to our website and get some information on how to sign up. And I would strongly advise that. You can go to the next slide. Okay, now these are, I'm gonna go through this a little quick, but it's very critical. Um, this is true now, not only for doing business with NASA, but for doing business with every federal agency. You start with the small business specialists at that center or that agency, you know, like at Navy where I came from, they have 10 different commands, you know, one that buys airplanes, one that does ships, you know, one that does construction. And each of the small business specialists at any federal agency knows the requirements of that center or agency, as well as who the people are that have the money and when the procurement's gonna start and things of that nature. So you need to build a relationship with them because that's where the money is, the money is and the requirements are. And then the same thing with the uh, SBLOs, you'll see Small Business Liaison Office. Every large prime contractor has a person that handles small business for that, for that company and it pays to get to know them so you can get to those subcontracting opportunities. And you have to build relationships, they're not done overnight. And you know, it takes, just like, you're not gonna walk up and do business with somebody you just met on the street. You do business with people you develop relationships with. It's the same thing in the federal government. You have to start going to these outreach events. You have to use trade associations. You know, you have to go, you know, meet and talk to them so you can build a relationship. They understand what you can provide and then how you guys can work together. Okay, so as I say there, the next one is talking about the different missions. You'll see that in a second. You know, every one of NASA centers has a different mission. So if you want to talk to somebody about science stuff, you would go to Goddard. Um, but if you want to talk about aeronautics stuff, you would go to Langley or uh, Armstrong or Ames. Okay, so make sure you do your homework on what centers do what things. And that's the same thing, and again, with any federal agency. It's better for you to go to the agency and say, I know this is what you're working on and I know this is what your requirements are 
and this is how I can help you. Vice going there and say, I'm a small well, disadvantaged business. What can you do for me? How can you help me? Um, you know, which one do you think will get better reception? Okay. Um, the next little bullets there are talking about, you know, the agency does has to do acquisition forecast twice a year. So look at their acquisition forecast, see what they need. There are very great resources out there like the Procurement Technical Assistance Centers, the PTACs. They give you almost free, if not very low cost, help on how to do business with the government so get to find out the PTACs. I know there's a couple in Pennsylvania. Um, of course, the SBA helps you out. And I've already talked to you about the mobile app. Now, the last thing I'll talk to you about there is the uh, responses to sources, sought synopsis, and requests for information. Before any federal agency can um, issue a contract, they have to decide if it's, you know, it's going to be set aside for small business or full and open. And the only way we do that is based on the responses we get to the sources sought synopsis. So if you see your sources sought out there, answer the questions on the sources sought. Um, do not just staple your company brochure to it because it will not be considered a responsive bid. If we ask very specific questions, answer the questions, send it back. And then if we get enough small business replies, that's when we can set it aside to small business. Okay, um, next slide. And I think we're getting close to being done. Okay, this just gives you an idea of where all our specialists are. You'll see the names and faces. You click on wherever you want to do business and you'll get their email address, their phone number and everything. Next slide. And this gives you an idea of which ones are research centers, which ones are space centers, which ones are science center. And I talked about JPL as an FFRDC um, and then also our agency wide resources. So um, you just click on any of those. It goes right to their mailbox. You will be having access to these slides. So you'll be good to go when you're doing it. And I think that should be my last slide. Yeah, pretty much. This just tells you how to reach us. You look at the top. That's our web page is uh, OSBP, which is Office of Small Business Programs .nasa.gov. And then our mailbox is small business at nasa.gov. And next slide. And I think I'm done. Yep. So I went through that a little fast, but all the slides are available to you. So and if you have any questions, just email our web our uh, mailbox and we'll make sure we get back to you. And thank awesome. you very much. Glenn, thank you so much. If it's all right, uh, Representative Cartwright, um, I've got a number of questions here that have come in. We have about maybe maybe seven or eight minutes before we're going to do some closing remarks. Is it all right if I just run through these questions as quickly as we can get through them? You bet, Jim. Go ahead. Okay. So the first one is from Aaron Manitou. Um, and Glenn and, and, and Jen, I'll let you guys pick who, who should answer this. Um, do we need FedRAMP certification in order to participate? FedRAMP certification. Okay. My answer to that is no. Um, you don't have to do as long as you can. Each contract that comes out stipulates what requirements are on it. And 90% of them, I would say, no, you don't need any kind of certification. There are some technical ones that require certain ISO certifications, but those are in the minority versus the majority. Yeah, and my answer to that real quick would be that if you are already a FedRAMP certified software platform, then you're probably not um, a platform that's that's not currently undergoing research and development. You're already a service. You're already a product that you're trying to sell to the government. So if that's the case, then you SBIR or STTR might not be the right place for you since we do technology development and research and development, right? So uh, we certainly for SBIR and STTR wouldn't require FedRAMP because you're developing it as you're working with us. Exactly. Okay. Uh, this is from John Rackus. Uh, does NASA give preference to vendors with AS9100 versus those with ISO 9001-2015? You give okay. preference to vendors with uh, AS9100. Okay, again, as I said, the first answer, it all depends on the requirements that are in the solicitation. Um, most of them tell you exactly what certifications you have to have and when you need them, because some of them you can still be working on it up through time of contract award, which sometimes takes six to eight months, so you can get it during that process, but it will tell you and specify what exact uh, certifications you need in that solicitation. Cool. Um, this is uh, 
Uh, Stephen Dynan, uh, where can we find the detailed technologies or efforts that NASA is focused on that are important to Artemis? So I'll take that from the SBIR perspective, Glenn. Um, we publish our solicitations and keep them online um, at sbir.nasa.gov. So a great uh, trick to do is to go to sbir.nasa.gov, download solicitations from previous years, and do a word search um, through the word version of it to see if there are capabilities that your firm has or works on that might actually align with a specific problem statement that NASA is asking for small business solutions for. And in fact, for the last two years, we've indicated which problem statements, which we call subtopics, are Moon to Mars or Artemis relevant with a little moon symbol <laughs> right next to them on the website to make it easy for you to see which of those subtopics actually are relevant to Moon to Mars or Artemis objectives. So um, tons of great historical information about the specific problems NASA has that we think small businesses could help um, contribute to within the research and development space are on our website. And, and since Jen didn't toot her own horn, I'll do it for her. They have a great help desk that helps a lot of small businesses with any questions they have about the technology and SBIR program. All right, uh, I got another question here. John Ramstead, CEO Beyond Influence Inc. Um, disadvantaged uh, VOSB, veteran owned small business. We provide leadership training and executive coaching to the United States Air Force. Does NASA have needs around training to develop leadership? high performing teams and creating an inclusive culture and the answer to that would be yes and all of those contracts are done out of our nasa shared services center um and that last sheet that i showed you you'll see nasa shared services center the small business specialist is mr troy miller and his phone number and email address are right on the slides and he can discuss with you upcoming contracts that are available and you can also look at our ACL sheets, our active contract listings, and it shows you a couple of those contracts that are there. Okay. Uh, this looks like a question for, for Jen. Uh, phase three needs a marketing team. This is Art Larson. Phase mm -hmm. three needs a marketing team with funding about equal to R&D. Unless the small business invests in marketing by end of phase two, this will not work well. How does NASA see working with small businesses to assure this aspect of the business um, is part of the SBIR effort? Yeah, so that's a really, really good, insightful question, um, art and observation, that getting to phase three is hard. <laughs> the commercialization journey is very difficult. And just because you have a widget that works doesn't mean that people are going to want to buy it unless it's solving a real problem that they have. Um, uh, uh, or unless you found your customers, right, and really understand what your customers need. So one of the things that Congress actually offered us um, in terms of flexibilities in the last authorization of the small business um, SBIR bill was a new program called TABA, the Technical and Business Assistance Program, that will allow uh, companies to request up to $50,000 um, $50,000, so a phase two award is $750,000. The TAB assistance is 50, so it's, you know, 10%, 15% of the overall award value, but that that money can specifically go to things like product sales, uh, uh, patenting your technology, the things that go with the actual business side of developing technology and trying to increase the likelihood of success to transition to phase three. And so if folks are interested in those additional types of resources we make for, uh, available for business assistance, helping you figure out how to commercialize, sell, and get ready uh, to, to, um, to take your products to phase three. I'd encourage you to check out the i program that we fund in phase one, and also the tab of funding um, that allow you to work with vendors uh, to help customize kind of the, the resources you need to help increase your likelihood for business success. And if I can just throw one more thing in there, Jen, I know in the Congressman's area, there's a thing called the Northeastern Pennsylvania Alliance that can support small business and government contracting space. Um, their website's really easy, the www.ne for Northeast, um, PA for Pennsylvania, alliance.org. Um, they are a great resource for anybody looking to do anything in the government contracting space. That's okay. right, Glenn. They're, they're located in Pittston, and uh, Jeff Box has been heading that up ever since I've been in the Congress. They do a great job. Okay, last question, then I'll turn it over to Congressman Cartwright to, to take us home here. Um, uh, does, uh, does NASA require GSA schedule? 
do we require GSA schedule? Um, the answer is no. We actually prefer to do a lot of our own contracts ourselves. Um, GSA schedules are available to us. I'd say probably 10 to 15 percent of our contracts we go through GSA schedule, but most of them we do ourselves independently. So we can, you know, we're in charge of our own terms and conditions and watching our money and we can control the post award administration administration of that contract and that work. Awesome. Well, I just want to say uh, to Representative Cartwright, thank you so much for having us. As, as, as you know, uh, small business is the backbone of the United States of America. A lot of the innovation that we need as an agency is embedded in those small business innovators. Um, and I know that uh, that's near and dear to your heart as a congressman. So thank you for having us. Um, and, and we look forward to working with you um, and your constituents um, as, we, as we go forward to the moon and, and on to Mars. So thank you, Congressman Cartwright. Thank you, Administrator Bridenstine. And I, I want to say this. Um, thank you for the, the Glenn and Jen show as well. And um, uh, in, in case anybody do, doesn't know, how do, you get, how do you get a copy of the slide deck that you guys presented? Um, I believe your team will make them available to anybody who registered through your link. So if not, they can, uh, they have, uh, I can just give you our email address again, which is simple, smallbusiness at nasa.gov. Just ask our office and we can make sure we can get both Jen's and my set of slides out. Terrific. Thanks, Glenn. Look, uh, NASA has been a world-renowned name in space exploration and aeronautics research for decades. Uh, I'm thrilled you saw the value in connecting to the businesses in, in my region. Um, and thank you all to all the small business owners for t attending today's uh, event. We had over 153 participants. Um, and, and that's gratifying that, that we got that, uh, that kind of that level of interest. Uh, I, I agree with Jim Bridenstine that American ingenuity starts with small businesses. Uh, look at the Wright brothers, you know, uh, two people uh, handling a, a bicycle shop, figured out how to fly. <laughs> um, we have a lot to offer here in Northeastern Pennsylvania. And, and that deserves to be recognized. Uh, we have hardworking, dedicated people. Um, I know the people listening in on this call will succeed in your future endeavors as business owners. And I look forward to seeing future partnerships between our local companies and the Space Administration. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for joining this call. And uh, have a great day. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, much. sir. And thank you, Administrator Brad.